Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over a pistol that I've had in for a while and has been making appearances on my social media outlets uh, during that time, probably for the last five or six months. And this is the Sig Sauer P226 Legion pistol. This is the single action only version of it. Uh, these Legion series pistols are, are available with both the 226 and 229 and in 226 with uh, single action only like we have here or the uh, double action, single action, a little bit more traditional with what SIG is known for. So what we're gonna do today is go over the pistol itself. Um, but in order to do that, I kind of thought we wanted to compare it with some of the more classic 226s. And then we'll get into obviously the features of this particular pistol as well. But what we're gonna do next is step outside, do an accuracy test with it. Cause this gun uh, with this trigger should be capable of some pretty impressive accuracy. 226s are known for being pretty accurate guns as it is. And then with the work that goes into this Legion pistol, uh, it really should step it up a little bit. So enough yapping, let's step outside. See what kind of accuracy we get with this pistol in the gun right now we have a 115 grain total metal jacket minute man munition stuff just practice stuff however those of you that watch the channel for a while know this stuff tends to be pretty accurate uh, i expect that to be the case here in the sig legion with the reputation of the 226 as well as this excellent trigger which we'll get into more here in just a second so uh target down range 25 yards and the rest is a ctk precision rest um really the rest is what makes this these groups possible because if not there's just so much wobble factor it's always hard to say so we'll get to it no more yapping and then we'll switch the loads and see what happens looks pretty good from here um with that trigger there's just no excuses I can even make. It's it's phenomenal. So next up, we'll go to a more self-defense oriented load. This is the uh, Federal Premium uh, HST 150. So heavy for caliber load. Um, and we'll see what kind of uh, results we get out of that. I've shot this stuff with a few other guns and had good results. So I'm expecting the same, but you never know. That's why we test it. I can't see all the holes from where I am. Hopefully that means uh, they're either really close or one's in a hole or something like that, but we'll go check it out. Both the groups look pretty good. The Minuteman Munitions did well. Um, we're right at two inches there, so I'll take that with a practice load all day. And then the extreme spread there on the Federal was one and a quarter inches. Now, uh, I guess is I probably can't do that twice, but I'm not gonna reshoot a bunch of groups, but that's a phenomenal five shot group at 25 yards. Again, the pistol's been very accurate with anything we put through it, but that's really good. Not sure it's duplicatable, but hey, I'll take it. As you're probably guessing at this point, I tend to be a fan of the P226 series of pistols. I have a number of them that have been made over the years. I actually also have a Mark 25 that just won't fit in camera, but we do have a collection of them here made in Germany and USA, sort of a, a combination of the different variants. But what we're going to do here is focus on this one, which is the most currently produced one um, that has sort of the modern features that SIG is still putting out and compare it to the Legion series SIG here. Starting out on the front end of the pistol, one thing you notice is that the slides themselves are are different. The Legion has the forward cocking duration, but there are some things that are similar as well. So if you look down here on the rail section, neither one of those are going to be Picatinny or Mil Spec 1913 style rails or SIG proprietary rail. Most light laser accessories will fit on there, um, but just pointing out that it's not a 1913 style rail like you'd see with the uh, 
Mark 25 pistol. One thing I really like about the Legion, a really nice upgrade, is going to be these sights. These are the X-ray sights. That's what uh, SIG calls them. They're three-out sights, and on the rear, we sort of have a blacked-out rear. It's got good serrations on there to prevent any sort of glare. It's got a good edge on there as well if you want to do one-handed manipulations. And then up front, we have another tritium vial, and it is surrounded by a bright green ring. Really, it draws your eye to it in the daytime, and also the vial is a little bit more exposed, so at night, it actually looks like a bigger dot than the rear ones. So either way, you're definitely getting that front sight focus with the uh, traditional 226s. You're going to get your standard 3.0 night sights. Um, they're actually very good sights for factory sights. I've never had a problem with SIG sights at all, but the Legion series definitely steps it up a little bit. The first thing you're going to notice looking at the top of the slides is going to be that little Legion engraving on there. It's just something that's a little extra touch on all the different Legion pistols that they offer. Um, and also you'll notice that the slide coloration is different. We have a traditional black finish here on the regular 226. And then we have a PVD, which I know what it stands for. I just can't pronounce it. We'll write it down here on the bottom of the screen. Um, finish on there. It's a nice gray matte finish. It really looks good. Um, a lot of times when I look at it in photos online, you almost can't notice that it's not black, but when you see the two side by side, it does jump out at you. Another benefit of the Legion series is that the controls, whether they be the actual slide lock or the decocker, if you have the double action version, are a little bit more recessed into the pistol. So one thing that I've had happen to me countless times with standard 226 is that due to my thumbs forward grip, I end up riding the slide release and it doesn't lock back on the last round. Now it's not the gun's fault, it's the shooter's fault, but um, with the Legion, I've not had that happen once, not at all, and I'm using the same grip with both pistols. As opposed to the standard 226, your Legion series is going to have these G10 grips on there with that little Legion logo on both sides. They do, they are a two-piece grip, I should say, and they really do stick to your hand quite nicely. There's absolutely nothing to complain about. It. They look good and they feel good. However, you guys know I'm a big fan of the Hogue Piranha grips, so it just so happens that Hogue does make a set of them. We've been using them throughout the review, so uh, in different scenes, you're going to see different grips on the gun when we we'll shooting it, but definitely like them both with these uh, Hogue ones really do go well with that great finish in my opinion. The pistol ships out with a really nice box and a bunch of great literature in there concerning the Legion line of guns and it also ships with three Checkmate magazines. These are the US made SIG mags now. On this particular gun with these mags I've not had a single issue however over the years when I have had problems or bobbles with the 226 line of pistols it's almost always been with the Checkmate mags so to rectify that definitely recommend picking up some Metgar mags. Um, I think Metgar just makes the best mags out there for the 226s for sure. They're very consistent and uh, never had any problems with them at all. The pistol has really nice trackering up front that's absent on some of the traditional SIG pistols. Uh, it's both here on the front as well as the underside of the trigger guard and the front of the trigger guard. So again, along with those grips, it really does help the pistol stay locked in your hand when you're firing it for sure. It also has a sort of uh, extended beaver tail. Now if you look at some of the uh, other 226 models out there, they'll have really long beaver tails. This one's sort of in between that and the standard 226. So it will allow you to get a good high grip on the pistol, uh, especially when combined with the nice undercut that you have here on the Legion uh, pistols. It's not there. Again, on the regular 226s, you combine both of those features and you're gonna get about as high as you can possibly get on the uh, SIG pistols, really gives you a nice high grip and helps you stay on target under recoil. With the single action version that we have here, the safety is ambidextrous, very easy to manipulate, and has very positive clicks in place. Definitely nothing to complain about there. And one thing that we're also not gonna complain about is the trigger on this pistol. It's the best that I've felt of any of the uh, P226 pistols I've ever handled. So uh, a lot of things going on with it. Of course, the actual trigger itself looks a little bit different, and that is going to be the flat shoe trigger. It's also combined with the short reset trigger, as well as a custom trigger job all done on there. So really, it comes down to having a fantastic trigger. Uh, what it looks like when you're firing is you have some play right up in here, and then once you hit that wall, you have a little bit of pressure. It's almost like a two-stage AR trigger, and then when you hit your wall, very, very nice crisp break right at four pounds on my trigger gauge now. The reset is equally good. Watch this. That's it. Might not have been able to see that. It's extremely short. Short and crisp. You can really get after it with this gun. If you are a you know a skilled marksman with getting your sights back on target, 
you can shoot this gun extremely, extremely fast due to the combination of the trigger as well as the undercut and beaver tail allowing you to stay nice and high on the pistol. The gun disassembles just like every other SIG out there on the market, but there is something a little bit different on the inside we'll show you real quick. I'll flip the lever down. The actual recoil guide rod is different on this pistol than it is with other 226s, as you can see there. It is a solid guide rod as opposed to the standard hollow tube that most 226 pistols will have now. Uh, gives you a little bit more weight up front. This pistol weighs in at 35 ounces on my scale versus the standard 34 ounces of most of the 226s. But otherwise, internally, it's very similar. When these pistols were released, there was a ton of marketing hype behind them. Um, SIG had a huge campaign, uh, definitely a lot of print ad, a lot of online media. Uh, they also included material with these guns, like uh, for instance, I think you got a challenge coin, uh, which had information on it, which allowed you to get into the Legion Club, which is an online forum that only members of these pistols could access, and it was set up by SIG. A lot of people really were into that. If you're into that, that's cool. Um, not particularly my sort of thing. I like guns that perform well look well and you know feel cool and just kind of look cool so this gun certainly does that um, now is it worth it to you uh, over the standard 226 I don't know I mean I think we laid out uh, a lot of the upgrades for you but the actual monetary value of that is you know your call it's about $350 uh, MSRP for this pistol higher than your standard 226 and uh, it comes out to approximately 1350 I believe MSRP on the street I looked around tonight before I actually shot this video and I was seeing them coming in at the low end around $1,100 and at the high end around $1,200 so it certainly is not a cheap pistol at all but you know I'm a fan of 226s as you guys have seen so for me I really had to have one and I thought the single action was definitely kind of a cool one that's a little bit different so I'm glad I picked it up no doubt I'd buy it again um, but one thing we need to talk about before the end of the video because if not you guys are going to blow it up in the comment section is the elephant in the room which was the uh, military arms channel test done by my friend Tim um, on one of these pistols and it was uh, done basically testing the pistol in mud water uh, all different types of elemental conditions and the gun didn't do so well um, however in my usage here which has been predominantly range using range usage doing some sort of tactical drills and things like that not had a single issue with it at all but you know I didn't drop it in dirt water stuff like that but a lot of folks were disappointed with the performance in that test um, I guess as was I but it's a sample size of one so I'm not sure how much you can draw from that the 226 is a very heavily tested pistol uh, you can look at the military trials that go into all the different details of that um, over you know period of a year or two uh, with a bunch of different pistols and a bunch of different testing and it did pretty well and I don't think this Legion series is too far off from that in terms of the pedigree of the pistol so Obviously, I would have liked to see it do better, but it's not going to dissuade me from buying any more 226s or using them or counting on, counting on them should I choose to do so um, in a defensive situation. So that's pretty much it. I think we've ranted it on long enough. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the pistol or anything like that, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we hope to see you in the next video.